Hello friends! 30 years ago, audiences all around America were saying Calabunga Dude as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles hit the big screen. This week on a special Shelter From Home episode of Heat Vision Breakdown, let's look back on a film that taught kids the word damn and to threaten any pizza boys dumb enough to put anchovies on their pies. Ninja Turtles began life as a comic book from writers Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. The road manager for the prop comic Gallagher, that dude with a mustache and mallet who really hated watermelons, was a fan of the comics and teamed up with a producer to pitch the movie around Hollywood. A movie based on a comic book? Slam dunk for a movie studio, right? Well, no, not exactly. No studio wanted to touch a property about turtles living in a sewer beneath New York City, especially as Ninja Turtles was being pitched around town in 1988, when comic book movie flops like Howard the Duck and Superman 4 were fresh in movie executives' minds. So, the Turtles team set their sights abroad, spending months hounding Tom Gray, an executive at Golden Harvest, the Hong Kong-based studio known for releasing Enter the Dragon. Gray convinced his boss to greenlight the movie at $3 million. But there was another hurdle, getting the blessings of the creators of the Ninja Turtles comic book, who had story approval rights. They weren't impressed with screenwriter Bobby Herbeck, who had to spend nearly two months with the guys in Northampton, Massachusetts before they finally signed off on the script treatment. Music video director Steve Barron, known for Michael Jackson's Billie Jean and AHA's Take On Me, both awesome videos, was tapped to helm the film and convinced Jim Henson, Lord of the Muppets, to come aboard to work on the movie. Henson's Creature Shop had to create two suits for each turtle. One suit, for fight scenes, had no electronics in them, while the other had electronic components controlling the turtle's facial expressions. Henson put the electronics in the back of the turtle shells. In no time, the movie's modest $3 million budget had ballooned to $6 million. Oh no. As the July 1st, 1989 start date for the film approached, a deal with Fox fell through. No studio had agreed to distribute the film, and Golden Harvest didn't have the cash to finance the film without outside help. Ten days before cameras rolled, it looked like production would be shut down. But that's when New Line stepped in to help partner on the film. In the meantime, four actors were cast as turtles. Josh Pice, Leif Tilden, Michelin Sisti, and UK actor stuntman Brian Foreman. The stars had grown close, spending months together in New York training with a sensei, but that didn't prepare them for the horrors of wearing full-size turtle suits. The suits weighed 70 pounds and were unbearably hot and claustrophobic. Josh Pice, in particular, channeled his frustrations with the costume into rage. Handy, as he was playing Raphael, the grumpy turtle. All of the actors performed their lines on set, but Pice was the only star who got to do his own voiceover. The studio opted for other actors for the voices in the final film, including Corey Feldman as Donatello, Robbie Rist as Michelangelo, and Brian Tochi as Leonardo. Against all odds, the movie became a big hit when it opened on March 30th, 1990 grossing $201 million globally, which is $398 million now, but adjusted for inflation. I checked. It stayed number one for four weeks, something that almost never happens today. Or then, really. Don't underestimate the turtles, dude. Head over to THR.com slash HeatVision for more on your favorite movies, comics, video games, and beyond. You know, the good stuff. Cowabunga!